So basically, Isaiah 65, judgment and salvation. I revealed myself to those who did not ask for me. I was found by those who did not seek me. To a nation that did not call on my name, I said, here am I. Here am I. All day long I have held out my hands to an obstinate people who walk in ways not good, pursuing their own imaginations, a people who continually provoke me to my face, offering sacrifices in gardens and burning incense on altars of bricks, who sit among the graves and spend their nights keeping secret vigil, who eat the flesh of pigs and whose pots hold broth of unclean meat. Who say, keep away, do not come near me, for I am too sacred for you. Such people are smoke in my nostrils, a fire that keeps burning all day. See, it stands written before me. I will not keep sound, but I will pay back in full. I will pay it back into their laps, both your sins and the sins of your father, says the Lord. Because they burned sacrifices on the mountains and defied me on the hills, I will measure into their laps the full payment for their former deeds. This is what the Lord says, as when juice is still found in a cluster of grapes, and men say, do, don't destroy it, there is yet some good in it, so I will do in, in behalf of my servants. I will not destroy them all. I will bring forth descendants from Jacob and from Judah, those who will possess my mountains. My chosen people will inherit them, and there will my servants live. Sharon will become a pasture for flocks, and the valley of Echor a resting place for herds. For my people who seek me. But as for you who forsake the Lord and forget my holy mountain, who spread a table for fortune and fill bowls of wine for destiny, I will destine you for the sword, and you will all bend down for the slaughter. For I called, but you did not answer. I spoke, but you did not listen. You did evil in my sight and chose what displeased me. Therefore, listen what the sovereign Lord says. My servants will eat, but you will go hungry. My servants will drink, but you will go thirsty. My servants will rejoice, but you will be put to shame. My servants will sing out of the joy of their hearts, but you will cry out from anguish of heart and wail in brokenness of spirit. You will leave your name to my chosen ones as a curse. The sovereign Lord will put you to death, but to his servants he will gather, he will, he will give another name. Whoever invokes a blessing in the land will do so by the God of truth, but whoever takes an oath in the land will swear by the God of truth, for the past troubles will be forgotten and hidden from my eyes. Okay, on page 666 of Isaiah, it's 66, and it ends on 667. So 66 verse 6, on page 666, is this is what the Lord says, we go down. Hear that uproar from the city, hear that noise from the temple, it is the sound of the Lord repaying his enemies all they deserve before she goes into labor she gives birth before the pains come upon her she delivers the son who has ever heard of such things who has ever seen such things can a country be born in a day or a nation be brought forth in a moment yet no sooner is Zion in labor than she gives birth to her children do I bring to the moment of birth and not give delivery says the Lord do I close up the womb when I bring to delivery says your God rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad for her all you who love her Rejoice greatly with her, all you who mourn over her, for you will nurse and be satisfied at her comforting breasts. You will drink deeply and delight in her overflowing abundance. For this is what the God, this is what the Lord says: I will extend peace to her like a river, and the wealth of the nations like a flooding stream. You will nurse and be carried on her arm and dandled on her knees, as a mother comforts her child. Will come so I will comfort you. You will be comforted over Jerusalem. When you see this, your heart will rejoice, and you will flourish like grass. The hand of the Lord will be made known to his servants, but his fury will be shown to his foes. See, the Lord is coming with fire, and his chariots are like a whirlwind. He will bring down his anger with fury, and his rebuke with flames of fire. For with fire and with his sword, the Lord will execute judgment upon all men, and many will be slain. Many, many will be those slain by the Lord. So notice they make references to chariots and swords, Egyptian style vengeance. It goes on. Those who consecrate and purify themselves to get in to go into the darkness. Excuse me. Those who concentrate and purify themselves to go into the gardens 
follow the one in the midst of those who eat the flesh of pigs and rats and other abominable things they will meet their end together declares the lord and i because of the actions their image, imaginations am to come and gather all nations and tongues and they will come and see my glory i will set a sign among them and i will send them of those who survived the nations to tarshish to the libyans and lydians to tubal and greece and to the distant lands they have not heard of my fame nor or see my glory they will proclaim my glory among the nations and they will bring all your brothers from all the nations to my holy mountain jerusalem as an offering to the lord on horses and chariots and wagons and mules and camels says the lord they will bring them as the israelites bring the grain offerings to the temple of the lord in ceremonial clean vessels and i will select some of them also to be priests and levites as the new heavens and the new earth that i make will endure before me so will your name and descendants endure from one new moon to another from one sabbath to another all mankind will bow down before me and they will go out and look upon the dead bodies as those who rebel against me and warm their warm will not die nor will the fire be quenched and they will be loathed some to all mankind so it talks about cruel judgment of god you know, when in, in, in uh, 66 part 19, it says, you know, and he's basically saying what's going to happen in the New Testament. How he's going to send people over there because Greece and um, the Libyans haven't seen the glory of God, but the Africans have, and the people in the Middle East have. So it was just like I said; it was God was sending the messengers to fill the spiritual gap. I made that claim in one of my videos, and you know I talk about Amos and the Book of Nahum. And so the black people are the good people in the Bible, and the Mormons got it twisted, and a lot of other races got it twisted. The number one um, good guy in the Bible was a mix of Ham and Shem. And I have no problem with all the you know, tribes, but the Babylonian Empire definitely was a bad empire. And the Persian Empire, you know, there's two ways of looking at it. You can look at it like through the pagans and the scientists who side with the Greeks who say that when they had the battle that you know they're talking about in 300 and the expansion of the Persian Empire and you had King Leonidas and you know and whatever the fuck his name was yeah that whole cute little battle now they you know changed the facts a little bit okay fine so What basically happened is the Jews are Egyptians. Egypt is in the Bible more than Israel is. They have parallels to chariots. Manasseh had a chance to redeem himself. Um, he did, then his son redeemed himself. I mean, his son was a good guy. It's kind of like the story of Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker, but, you know, it's, it's quite interesting. There's a lot of parallels that can be drawn there. There's a lot of um, good stuff in the book of Isaiah. Um, uh, the, the page number, as I showed you, if you could look at it as it has something to do with 666, but it doesn't, because the pages in the Bible are different in every one. And there's the prelude and preface, and there's notes and cliff notes, and there's different things, different size pages in the Bible. So that has nothing to do with it. But at the same time, when you know that God is trying to show you signs, you know. Me, one thing I do is I open to a page in the Bible and I see where it takes me. I see if maybe God's trying to show me something that way when I really need a sign. But I'll end this video uh, here. But it seems like everything I say, you know, supports my first video, and I was right about everything except for the Republican nomination. Which I said Herman Cain and Cain went getting rich and then Romney and Santorum could be in the lead, he could be winning. 
And, you know, I never said God inspired me. That's that's my personal feeling about it. And now I'm going to rely more on God's view and less on my personal feelings as the days are to come. Tomorrow begins the three-day countdown. And on the third day, set will occur. Thank you.